Yes, yes, I'm on my way. Just a moment. Come, Sergei is waiting for us. Seriously, Serdar, who sleeps during the day? And yes, I know, there is no difference between day and night down here. I get that you need a weapon, but I can't just leave this place. It's not a request, and we'll ensure your wife and kid are protected. That's not the part that worries me. You're scared? What if I am? We all are killed. Which is why we need Doctor. Are we waiting? Good day. At the barracks. Doctor. Hello. This far up the tunnels. Slavers don't rip people's arms off. Okay, I've had enough. How am I supposed to sleep tonight? With a gun underneath your pillow. Sildar. You like 
likely already heard the rumors, but there was a mutant attack on one of our guard posts. We are preparing a team to take them down. So everyone's a bit tense, as you might imagine. I will. Thank you. Well, guys, let's have a drink. To living. To life. To life. Ah, great stuff. Yes. Listen to me, Han. You're not a bad guy, but you keep to yourself too much. Always sitting with your books, even talking you into getting a drink is tough. Lighten up a bit, man. Yeah, or you'll just end up all alone. I appreciate the advice.
much for eight for that! I'm running low on ammo! Shit! Sirdar, get to the door! Do we rely on our eyes too much? Are we too convinced that the things we can see are real and those we can't see are not? What's true darkness? And what's true blindness? Open your eyes and you shall see. Or you shall not. Sometimes one must get into an utter darkness in order to begin to see. We avoid the darkness because it hides things that may be too horrible for us even to imagine. It's the unspeakable that scares us. The unspeakable that the darkness holds within. It's the acid that corrodes the limits of the world. We think we know. When the entire world gets immersed in the dark, you can't avoid it any longer. You can only embrace it. Say something. Are you okay? I've been yelling at you, but you just kept standing there, staring off into space. Flap thought you were one of those boogeymen the exhibition guys were babbling about. He almost shot you. I'm fine. I just had the strangest feeling of deja vu for a moment. Deja vu, eh? Isn't that what they call it when you experience a memory from a past life? Past life? <laughs> It's a misfiring of electrical discharges in your brain, causing an illusion, nothing more. <laughs> if you say so... Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to get back home. Oh, I'm sorry, of course. Turn the key to start the trolley. Be safe, Sander. I'll be all right.
Thank God you are back. Max has been up my butt asking where you are literally every five minutes. Tasha, treating drunken merchants for radiation sickness rarely goes as planned. He said to send you down to the mushroom farm as soon as you turned up. And word of warning, our station chief is not in one of his better moods. <laughs> I look forward to seeing one of those firsthand someday. Leave us alone, mostly. Life's good, yes? But consider this. It's 2028. We survived a nuclear apocalypse and radiation, and all the shit life has thrown at us since. But you tell me, where is everybody? I don't mean Moscow or Russia. I mean the world. We're down here, facing all over each other's territory, like metro station is the goddamn winter palace or something. Even under the surface, it's not like we're hard to fight. But you're telling me not one plane survived on the entire planet? No one's ever figured out how to contact a single satellite? Or maybe, just maybe, we're not even part of that border. What if the bombs didn't change the world? They moved it to an alternate dimension. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. I'm telling you, open your feeble little minds and really listen to what I'm saying. Max isn't in his office. If you go through the living quarters, you might still catch him. Wow! They've got so many different types of mushrooms here! Huh? I told you, you would like a Gadomicheskaya. Everything's so nice here! And we are going to stay? Like... Good. That's right. Look around. We're home now. I'm home now! Mushrooms! Get your mushrooms! We've got magazines, books, some with all the pages. Fresh from the farm. Come feed your bellies. Best price for scrap, right here. You won't find pre-war stock like this anywhere in the metro. Save yourself a trip to the tunnels. We take the risk so you don't have to. Eat 
your dinner before it gets cold. I don't right? you. I don't like it. What's there not to like? I think it tastes pretty good. I don't like it. Do you think that fruit was free? Everything just fall from the sky, huh? Eat your dinner, young man. That's an order. I want to have good food, like in Yasha's pictures. Dominic, we told you. Those old photos. You can't actually have those things anymore. They are sort of uh, like make believe. That's what you said about the monsters, too. Did you see those spartans that came from the other day? Get used to it. Apparently, Max is trying to make some deal. A security resolution, she called it. What? Like mercenaries? More like showing off. They'll probably march in here a few times a year, give him a high five, and we're all supposed to feel safer at night. You've got to give him one for the friend. I don't know. How's this talk? Good. So much better. I owe you, Doc. Happy to help, but no more rat kebabs for a while. Oh, hey, hey, 
days are now. Have you talked to Max yet? I heard there's trouble with the mushroom. No, I'm on my way to see him now. Oh, good. Uh, he went that way. Runaways and assholes all day, and let me run around playing doctor for a while. I've got a very healthy list of people I'd like to stab with a needle, let me tell you. I think you may want to work on your bedside manner. Don't even start. You and your wife are not my favorite people right about now. Yana, has something happened? Has something happened? He asks. If by something, do you mean did your wife destroy our mushroom farm because she heard the voice of her dead son again. Because if so, then yes, something happened. Ah, is she all right? She's a lot better than our mushroom farm. Shut, shut, shut it off! Shut it off! Close the damn hole! There's more in there where that came from. Five years to build this steam system. Hundreds of issues to consider. You know what scenario never came up? What if you can't hear the voices of the dead inside your pipes? I don't understand. Yana was doing so well. <sighs> I'll take care of it, I promise. Yeah, well, you promised 500 times to me. I'm up to my eyeballs in bullshit today, so I don't need any more, okay? Sorry. Go. Go check on your wife. But then, you come see me. Friend or not, this station is my wife. This has to be the end of it.
Candero. Sorry you have to jump across the catwalk, but you can imagine who you have to thank for that one. I miss my calling as an interior decorator. Perhaps. Okay, go on then. I know you're dying to start doctoring me. Max said you were dead yet. Do you feel up to telling me? Do you is the question. Stop taking my haloperidol. You what? Keep in mind I was still taking them when I decided to stop. We've been through Please, this. Please, Serdar, it hurt me. Your meds didn't make me lose it. On the contrary, they kept obscuring my ability to hear, but I was so desperate to hear. Ah, hallucinations are not trivial. You are to assume our hallucinations. You hear voices. No one else The can. fact that you won't even consider any alternative is the reason I threw the Heloperidol out in the first place. You threw them away? None of you have ever heard Petya's voice, so how can you know what I'm hearing? Because he died, Yana. He died, Yana, 15 years ago. And you can't hear an eight-year-old boy for 15 years. Where's the shuttle? Back there, through the vent.
Max mentioned the young girl disappeared from the station. Could you have overheard someone discussing? No, mister. There has to be a reason for everything. I didn't hallucinate my son's voice because of a bunch of gossiping busybodies. For all things, there is an explanation. Even the ones too terrible to accept. I can't exactly tell that to Petya, can I? I'm sorry. It wasn't fair. Not when you're only caring for me. My love is not something you ever have to apologize for. It is for you. God, you're sappy. Go on. Run back to your boyfriend, Max. I had him wine for you to go see him once you made sure I wouldn't burn anything else down. I think I've earned a little hard labor. Just give me some time, okay? Ah, that did something. Looks like I can reduce some of the pressure from here. Yes, you saw what happened at the farm then. It's being taken care of. Thanks. Serdar! Max is back. He's up in the office. I don't hear a knock on the door. Nope. Still don't hear anyone knocking. You're a child. I'm the boss. The way this jungle is growing, we may never have to repopulate the surface. I doubt God invented plastic with nuclear winter in mind. But hey, a fake garden is better than no garden at all, eh? How is Yana? Pretending her husband isn't a hot-headed, insensitive ass. You know what? Good. Say stupid shit more often. Your two are so lovey-dovey as it is. I, I, I literally throw up in my desk at least once a day. She was trying so hard to be reasonable. My friend, I've watched you both in your several lifetimes worth of bullshit just to try and make her feel halfway human again. Trust me, your wife knows that. Let us hope so. In any event, the more pressing concern is that it appears Yana has uh, run out of her haloperidol. That's why she lost her edge. Uh, you and bad timing, pal. The stalker who tracks down your fancy medical stuff, very talented lady I used to run with, named Nata. She was supposed to make a delivery over a week ago, which is long enough that I think I may have to strike Nata out of my little romantic birthdays calendar, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Though, I do know the route she usually takes. Could the medication still be there somewhere? The goddamn Holy Grail could be there. Max, why don't you just tell me where the route is? Because you'll go. And from here, the first thing you'll hit is a Nosalis den. 
That's probably the most relaxing part of the trip. You forget, I am not, shall we say, inexperienced when it comes to Nasales. Oh, right. Your old station. Sorry. Um, anyway, normally I'd uh, hire some poor suckers to go, but since we're running low on poor suckers right now, my lovely voice in your ear will have to do. Stick it to your shoulder like this. Voice activated. State of the art. When there was a state of the art. It's almost like living in the future. And for times when my wisdom alone does not suffice. I've heard they don't do much without those bullets. <laughs> you want an empty clip just to look cool? Be my guest. Go on, smart guy. Take it. Yes, I know. Very pretty. Now do me a favor and holster it while you're in the station. Okay, cowboy? We have to at least pretend we are civilized down here. Lucky for you, the same supply cart that dropped Gorky Park off here is still uh, out on the station. And since nobody killed Akim on his way back here, his spare ammo should still be in the trolley as well. Max, you there? One sec. Truck two, call me when you find the ammo. Okay, I'm here. Let me find the ledger. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I know. Wait, let me check. Uh-huh. No. Sure. Give me a sec. It should be here. I thought you were in a hurry. Keep going. Hey, Serdar. Are you sure you don't want to let Diana know you're leaving? I'm sure. All right, your call. I went through the trouble of draining a few bottles. You know, give you something to shoot at. Show me that Tokarev Max gave you. Next, grab this magazine and insert it into your Tokarev. Go on, get a feel for the trigger. some larkers with an empty gun. You're empty. Here is a new magazine. I don't know if you handled that kind of trolley before, but Akim was complaining it's hard to start. 
Admittedly, Akim is an idiot. Some credit. The day is still young. <laughs> 